Okay, so. Lewis, we moved from uh, shaming contrapoints uh, for drug use because apparently she's she's not an Aristotelian eudaimon for doing so, unlike you with your snail, apparently. Um, to uh, making a very, very strange claim, even in the title of this stream, xenogenders could cause mental illness and even a psychotic break. Uh, xenogenders are just uh, gender descriptions and pronouns that don't match onto um, humans, right? So, like, like Doe uses it, its. That's a xenogender. Uh, Lewis is going to argue that this can cause a psychotic break. I don't know by what mechanism that would happen. Like, uh, uh, I, assuming he has any examples to draw from, I don't, this is sort of intrinsically baffling. I mean, if anything, and, and this is, this is one of the, the things that sort of differentiates xenogenders from like, you, you know, like just generally, um, affirming, uh, trans people's avowed identities is that there isn't the same kind, it's, it's a different social content. And so, like, well, simultaneously, like, there, there is still, like, the, a, a kind of social impetus to, to respect things when I, just for the sake of decency, ultimately. It's like xenogenders are, are, there's other stuff going on there. And not necessarily psychologically, it could be politically or whatever. Um, so it, it doesn't, it doesn't appear, at least on the surface, like it would bear the same kind of emotional weight as, for example, when, when somebody refuses to use a trans person's, uh, pronouns when they avow like she her or he him because you're not slotting someone into uh a, a space that they're specifically uh raised um that they've been sorry specifically raised to uh treat as some kind of um social default that they now have to like break a bunch of 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 taboos and conditioning and uh deal with like it's, it's just a different story you know Joe has a xenogender, but it doesn't use neo pronouns. Maybe it would help to actually get some clarity on on what we're talking about here. So, just for my edification, xenogenders. So neo pronouns are the pronouns used for xenogenders. Yes. Uh, neo pronouns are usually associated. With, oh yeah. So neo pronouns are usually associated with non-binary people. Um, so I guess would NB be a neo pronoun then? Because pronouns don't always equal gender. There is a distinction here. Because I would assume, like, with, with the xeno part of xenogender, that, that part refers to... That part refers specifically to, like, um, some kind of, like, non-species, non-human species thing, right? You're right, and NB is just short for a pronoun, but it's not a pronoun. Um, we, us, they, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so so plural would be a neo-pronoun. No, uh, that's, uh, those are neo-pronouns, uh, the trusty po podcast. Xenogender is like Xer, Zem, X. Th those are, I guess unless you say like Xer gender. Yeah, it's categories. Gender is categories. Okay, but anyways, like, neo-pronouns is just different ways other than uh, he, him, she, her to refer to, um, I guess even they, them, because you can use those, uh, like, even even a transphobe can use those terms. Um, and sometimes do, um, to avoid using uh, she, her, he, him, oddly enough. 
Anyways, so this genius is going to argue that uh, xenogenders could cause mental illness and even a psychotic break. He's not even saying neo-pronouns, is he? That's what's kind of interesting. He's specifically saying genders can cause mental illness and even a psychotic break. Not the avowal of xenogenders. Not the social acceptance of xenogenders. Like, there would be huge problems with making that claim in the first place. Um, but at least that would sort of... That, that would sort of make intuitive sense as, like, a proposition, as a thing that could be, like, within the realm of, of social possibility. Or, or anything. But Xeno... I, I don't know. Well, let's let's see let's see what he has to say. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome Hello, to Lewis. another episode of Perspective Philosophy where we try to better our perceptions of the world through philosophical discussion. I hope you're all having a lovely day. So, I'm going to get straight into it. Today's episode is going to be on xenogenders. Um, xenogenders I was recently made aware of uh, as a concept, uh, you know, as a... As xenogenders are the perfect organism, unclouded by petty morality. As a progressive, quote-unquote, no, uh, notion of gender identity um, through the lovely uh, space that is Twitter. Um, Bookshelf analysis, I'm just seeing Harry Potter... Is that a bunch of manga or notebooks? And then, like, the, the, the Penguin cloth-bound editions at the bottom shelf there. And I think those are either comics or video game strategy guides. So I think this is just some corner of his living room or something. And people talking about what that, well, basically affirming that xenogenders are valid. Well, I'm here to say that I believe that xenogenders are invalid uh, philosophically speaking, I, I don't mean that I'm trying to invalidate anyone's sense of self. I, I think everyone has an inherent value in and of themselves. So I hope no one takes this as a person. Your, your identity and, and your sense of value are distinct. And you literally just said that you think xenogenders are invalid philosophically. And gender would be a part of your, your, your self-identity. So... All right. Personal attack or anything, that's that's not my goal. Um, my goal in this is really to safeguard people from what I think could be a destru destructive um, notion of identity to adopt. I think that it could lead to genuinely men genuine mental health concerns um, and even arguably, I think, if I'm correct, which we'll talk about, I think it might even lead to... Um, a psychotic break if applied in its most extreme um in the most extreme way it can be so um hopefully everyone is aware right now that i i'm not attacking you there is no there's no need to be afraid um not that you probably were afraid anyway i guess i don't know if i'm going to cause that intimidating i don't know if philosophers are that intimidating but <laughs> but you know there's no need to feel um persecuted or unwelcome you are people deploying the weight of their uh, institutional accreditation accreditation um to uh to characterize uh people's a, a key part of people's identities or people's avowed identities even people's avowed identities even if you think there's some kind of inherent contradiction there to impute uh a the inevitable <laughs> the shall we say To impute to that the likelihood of a stigmatized outcome, like mental illness or a psychotic break, to effectively turn um, the that component of your identity into a social ill. That's that's an attack. That's a very strong attack. Um, I I love my 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 pause game is just on point, isn't it? Just like, just look at this. Just look look at this. This, this, this is, this is the face of a philosopher king. This is, yeah, yeah, no, this is. Needs to be a renaissance painting about that. There needs to be a renaissance, I guess the renaissance is over. There needs to be, we need to have like that, that incorporated into some kind of Rembrandt style 
floor-to-ceiling portrait. You're very welcome, and you know, I'm very capable of being wrong, so if you do believe I am wrong, present an argument as to why I'm wrong, and I will address it. I'll do my best to address it. So, um, yeah. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to kind of pull up... Okay, you heard it here. He's going to do his best to address it. He has to respond to this. Is uh, I made a tweet, basically, about this. Um where I said, this sounds like a psychotic break to me, Xenogender, and then I quote, um... God, I can't freaking see that. What the hell is he looking at? Hang on. Oh, God damn it. That's unreadable. Does anybody have a link to that? I'm blocked on Twitter. I can't even see it. Okay, well, maybe he'll read the whole thing. This, uh... This, uh, definition. Make it bigger, so man. The definition that I found of Xenogender that uh, seems to be al al aligning with most people's interpretation of it, that as from what I can see, is is this one. And, you know, I'm aware that maybe other people would define it differently. Uh, fair enough. Uh, I I'm not necessarily here to to say that this is, you know... The, you know, like, you're, you're necessarily wrong. You may mean something totally different to this, and if you do, well then great, this critique doesn't apply to you, <laughs> you know. So anyway, <laughs> Xenogender is defined as a gender that cannot be con contained by human understandings of gender, more concerned with crafting other methods of gender categorization and hierarchy, such as those relating to animals, plants, or other creative thi cre creatures slash things. Xenogender individuals may use ideas and identities outside of the gender binary to describe themselves and avoid binary identifiers, such as using only their first name or the name of an animal. They may feel they cannot place a label on and blah, blah, blah. I think they're gender, basically. Uh, so I basically said that um, I think this sounds like a psychotic break in the way that it's defined. So if you look... It's a definition. How does that... You don't even need to agree that that's a thing that people can viably like ascribe to in, in like a socially consistent way to to give that definition how is that definition evocative of psychotic break that doesn't make any sense look towards um what it what it's actually saying a gender is a gender that cannot be contained by human understandings of gender that's the way i think it's defining itself now well uh, that's the way it's actually defining itself if we are to take that, we are basically saying a category, right? A, ca a way of a way of categor categorizing reality, uh, and in this case, the self specifically. Well, not of categorizing reality, categorizing, you know, objects in reality. In this particular case, human genders, um, they they are not given by nature, right? These are these are ascriptions that are developed. Socially, um, they're they're made by people in history. The particular features that we associate with one or the other or or any um, are are the result again of of history. Oh, you sent me a screenshot. And, okay, good. We'll 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 take a look at this actual tweet. Oh, thank you very much for that. Here, I just want to, I'm going to test this, I want to make sure I don't accidentally post DMs to the screen, that'd be bad. Okay, here we go. Here we go, guys. Let's make this bigger so you can actually see it. This sounds like a psychotic break to me. Xenogender, a gender can, that cannot be contained by human understandings, a gender, uh, quote-unquote. So a gender that can't be categorized by humans as being a gender, but is still a gender. I am X, but no one else can see I am X, only I can see it. That's not the implication of this. Um, a gender that cannot be contained by human understandings of gender. I, I think that phrasing is a little bit confusing. The point that it's making is that it's a gender that cannot be constrained by, I guess, uh, by the category human by itself. So xenogenders can involve... Um, some reference to non-human species or, or even like wh whatever it doesn't really matter what you think about that at a social level i i'm i'm a little bit perplexed myself but he's making a very specific claim in this video um he is saying that these could cause mental illness and even a psychotic break uh 
what he's what he's given us doesn't resemble a psychotic break it's 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 a definition of a thing that can can be ascribed to well well is ascribed to deliberately um for whatever reason You can send more links, including the article it's setting. Yeah, please do. Maybe we'll take a look at that after we've satisfied ourselves with this monstrosity. I'd say more like current societal understanding of gender rather than human understanding, but that would be semantics. Well, they're trying specifically to uh, implicate the fact that xenogenders often include or involve a deliberate move away from like a kind of species belonging, I suppose. The problem is that that's within human understanding, of course. That's because it's a human, presumably, um, who is who is writing that out, or 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 a, a human in a specific sense. Um, one of the reasons why I think there's a little less uh, gravity around xenogenders, in particular, of of that sort, is that I don't think generally. I'm speculating, of course, but I think generally insisting on calling a, a trans woman uh, by their their assigned assigned birth gender is much more harmful and hurtful than uh, being confused as to why somebody is referring to themselves as a non-human animal when they obviously, you know, at at, at certain levels that are generally widely accepted or not. Like there's there's a there's a project going on there. As opposed to being um, a there isn't an attempt going on as far as I can ascertain to sort of recoup and collect one's dignity as as an agent um, as specifically the kind of agent and the kind of social being they believe themselves to be. I feel very strongly that they are, um, and and to sort of brute force them socially into a role that causes them tremendous pain and harm to be sort of slotted into, if that makes sense. You know? You're not quite right about that. I think this should be understanding, but it absolutely can feel just as bad to be misgendered. Oh, oh fair enough. I'm not saying that it wouldn't necessarily feel bad wouldn't feel bad to be misgendered, but it seems like there's a different there's a slightly different content going on there, right? Because you're not being slotted into a particular social role per se in the case of xenogenders by, by denying the category, um, whereas in the case of denying um, the avowed genders and pronouns of, uh, I, I guess, like trans women or trans men or what have you, is, effect is effectively to um, assert that they are the, the opposite, quote-unquote. You see? That's that's sort of where I'm 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 going with that one. Well, would you say non-binary people as a whole are? Um, it depends. Are are we? Up, oh, serious? Do you want to come on and chat about this? Actually, you you seem to know more about this than I do, and we had a good chat last time. I'm gonna to wait to see if Sirius actually wants to come on. Um, they were they were pretty good last time. Oh, brilliant! Okay, cool. So we'll have somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. That'll be nice. I am all about augmenting my lack of familiarity on a topic with guests. All right, where are we here? Ah. Oh. Ready to roll. Cool, okay, brilliant. Pull them in. Hello, hello. All right, there we go. Okay, so I, I can try to explain this as best as I understand it, because I, I'm not, I don't have a xenogender. I don't, um, I, like, that's, I, I don't have, really consider myself to have any gender, but 
I, I've talked to people who do, and so to my understanding of it, the way that I have come to understand it at least is that when you have, uh, sorry, let me restart. I'm trying to okay. figure out the best way to explain this. So if you have, so you, un so you understand like the concept of being non-binary, that's yeah. just not being a binary gender. Right. So <clears throat> the thing is, is that in a lot of ways, that's not very descriptive. Like if I have two colors that are recognized, like, I don't know, blue and red, if I say you're not blue or I'm not blue or I'm not red, or rather I'm not blue or red, that just means that I'm not blue or red. It doesn't mean I'm green. It doesn't mean that I'm pink. It doesn't mean that I'm uh, like uh, yellow or orange or whatever, right? Sure. It yeah. just, it's just the quality of not being those things. Mm -hmm. So a xenogender, to my understanding, is just a more specific way of being non-binary because non-binary people still have like gender identity like they have feelings about what their gender roles should be they have feelings about like how to best express their gender and a xenogender is just a manifestation of that and the reason that it gets um often put to animals is because we have a lot of common ideas about animals so i i think i gave this example i might have given this example at some point i don't know but so take like cat gender. Okay. Um, like that may seem kind of incomprehensible, but like if you think about it, we have ideas of what it of what like cats are like, right? Like we think of them as like mischievous. We think of them as agile. We think of them as sleeping a lot. They think of them as needing attention. You know that like we have behavioral traits that we associate with cats, and when somebody says, like, I'm cat gender, what I take it to mean is that they are associating the common ideas that they have or that we have about cats to their gender identity. So here's here's where the distinction, I think, would lie. And that's fair enough. So so at that level, we're, we're imputing a kind of, um, I, I guess we're front-loading, like, personality traits, I suppose, as, uh, as definitive of, of gender expression. And we're sort of putting other things sort of into the background. So, so things like um, specific types of social role, stuff like that. Fair enough. If if if, if you if you feel comfortable with that reading, um, I I think that. Well, I I don't know. Okay, can you like make a distinction here? Because I think that when it comes to social roles, yeah. Those are often like pretty wrapped up in personality, are they not? Like, no, no, I no. Say... I, I I agree with you. Where where I'm going at with this is not that things like, I guess, binary gender gender roles aren't themselves equally heavily wrapped up in personality and sort of artificially and culturally attached to things like, um, you know, like like expression through clothing or like specific types of jobs or activities or, or even um, at, at a certain level like. Uh, the expression of secondary sex characteristics or things like that. Um, I think what I'm getting at here is there is a different kind of thing, or, or maybe there are additional things that you are doing to someone um, who is avowing uh, a gender within those specific um, binary categories within the present society that we live in now, or, or societies, I guess, as general. Um, that you aren't necessarily, not necessarily not doing either, but you aren't necessarily doing in the case of expressing perplexity, for example, like like cat gender, say. So what you're saying is sure. valid. I, I agree with that. There is a slight difference between, like, for example, saying, no, I don't think you're a cat. Like, it may be, it may be rude. Um, it may be misunderstanding the point that's being made. It may be misunderstanding the point that's being negated by, by that uh, stance. But you're not, for example, avowing that no, you're you're not you're not saying like no, you're not a cat, you're a man or you're a woman. You're just saying no, you're not a cat. So there's, it, it's 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 different in terms of the level of harm and the level of like a positive statement that you're you're imputing to them. It's more the result of of misunderstanding what they're trying to do, and maybe some discordancy between, um, sort of different frameworks for understanding what these things are, and not necessarily a deliberate attempt to. Uh, uh, defy 
their their self identity as such. If that okay, makes sense, I, I think I yeah no that I totally get that. So if I can just re repeat it back, please to try and make sure I understand. Yeah. Um, what you're saying is that uh, you know trans people, generally speaking, like even like most people have heard of trans people at this point. Most people have not heard of xenogenders, and if somebody expresses confusion at what a xenogender is like if you say oh you're a cat gender well i don't think that you're a cat you're a human being um like that's not really the same because it's like in a way their confusion is making them miss the point so it's not really like they're not even really addressing the same thing like it it's not expressing the same level of contempt or denial that an outright assertion of you know you are not a man you are not a woman might Right? In, addition, in addition, I think there are um, specific harms that are associated with being positively slotted into against your avowal and into like traditional gender uh, positions, right? I think that's that's sure. that's an additional factor, yeah. Okay, so I, I can get which that. Is not, which is not to um, be clear, it's not sanitizing refusing people's uh, xenogenders. I'm just saying like, it, yeah. speaking about yeah. it as plainly so, as possible, we're, we're doing something slightly different. Go on, please. Yeah. Yeah, so can I, maybe then, though, I would like to say that if somebody is, like, if somebody is expressing, per, like, perplexion mm -hmm. or uh, being confused at it, like, I don't think that that, like, I don't think that that expresses intent to harm. I don't think it necessarily expresses anything like that. But if after somebody has tried to explain it. So like we're watching a video right now where yeah. perspective philosophy is going to go on to like this huge rant about how um, it's causing people to have psychotic breaks and mental illnesses, right? I, I feel like past a certain point, you are using or doing the same kind of denial once you've had enough information to like accurately parse what's being said you're you're not going you're not just going off of confusion anymore you're just stating oh he's he's actively he's way. actively trying to stigmatize them for it as well and that bleeds into uh trans people farther down the line like it's 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 yeah. very yeah so like for example if he had made the argument that uh xenogenders um let's say there's a discordance between the concept of xenogenders and gender as it is used generally in philosophical parlance. I don't think we have anywhere near as much pro a problem with that. Why? Because I think partially, I, I think it's sort of deliberate. And secondly, um, like that, that's, that's an academic question, which is, which is fair to have. You're interrogating like what we mean by gender in that case. He's not making a diagnosis. He's making a diagnosis here. I think that's, okay. that's the principal yeah. issue that I have. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, okay, I think I, I understand what you're saying. Like, I, I just wanted to make make sure it was understood that, like, Xeno, people who have xenogenders, like, do take it seriously. And oh, yeah, for sure, I, yeah, yeah. I think it behooves them to, in, at some level to be understanding of people who are confused. Um, I also think that, like, if somebody is being sufficiently, um, like, strong-headed or... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? They're they're being they they seem to have like kind of an understanding, and they are still being bigoted about it. I I think that it warrants a similar level of uh, backlash that uh, like disrespect of binary trans. Oh yeah, no, no. I, I mean, at that level, it's literally just being disrespectful to a stranger without provocation. Um, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think. In this particular case, I'm not even so much concerned about that. I'm I'm really concerned about the actual harm that's caused, not so much intent. Like it's, for example, like a transphobic person yelling into uh, a, a box that nobody can hear. Like they, they may be as impunable um, for their bigotry as somebody who's doing so in public, but they're not actually causing harm because nobody knows they exist. Um, when we're talking about, I, I'm mainly concerned about what this sentence actually does. Xenogenders could cause mental illness and even a psychotic break. That actually, I can see that actually causing uh, real harm on a number sure. on a number of I, grounds. Yeah, sorry, you were going to say something. I, no, I, I was just going to say for sure that I, I think that it, it, it's interesting. I, I feel like it's often often the bigotry is stated in reverse. Like, oh, you are you have a, your xenogender is a is a symptom of your mental illness as opposed to your xenogender. Will oh, well, that's, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going illness. with that. See, e even if let's say for argument's sake that you just think xenogenders are ridiculous categorically, and that's easier to do right now than it is for, um, 
you know, like, I, I guess more vanilla trans identity, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, this is treated in, uh, like, this this kind of characterization is treated as, in, in a lot of popular discourse, as the inevitable consequence. Uh, it's kind of like the, slip, the, 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 the deeper end of the slippery slope of being uh, transpositive and accepting of people's gender identities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If that's assumed in a negative way, this is now being used as a way specifically to impugn other trans people as well. So, I, I don't I don't agree that you should even be doing this in this case. But even if, for example, you're somebody like Lewis, presumably, um, who who just categorically has has contempt for people avowing a geno a xeno geno gender a xeno gender identity. <laughs> Um, that will be directly used, um, to make exactly the same insinuations to other trans people as well. So it's, yeah. there's, there's no, there's no dimension of this where this is okay. Even just at, at a basic level, like this is, this is a grossly, this is a gross misuse of someone's accreditation. Like he has himself accepting his, his, uh, his degree on his channel, right? Like he, he really sells, this is a PhD candidate debating a so-and-so. Um, he is I mean, using not this, anymore. not anymore. Thank God he is, he is using, I, I'd love to hear the story behind that. Although I, I imagine it was just probably a lack of funding. Um, he, uh, he is using that position, that institutional position to render a, a psychological diagnosis to the public, um, without any justification, um, that that to me is like the definition of malpractice um insofar as For one sure. can be guilty of malpractice in the social sciences or in philosophy yeah and it's like he doesn't even have like a psychology his degree is philosophy but he often speaks on psychology and when I, whenever he does at least when i used to like watch his videos it he would sometimes bring up weird freudian shit that was like that's not really talked about anymore um, I think he was using it kind of metaphorically, but even still, it's kind of like strange that you're get that one would get most of their psychology knowledge from Freud as opposed to like more up to date sources. I guess. I don't think there's necessarily. I, I, I think Freud can be interesting, especially as like a social, uh, like think of him as a social a social scientist or something. And concepts that he he introduces are are used positively by a lot of thinkers, like. Um, Wendy Brown makes uh, interesting use of him at the end of uh, Wall State's Winning Sovereignty, but he this is this is a this is a medical statement. Xenogenders mm -hmm. could cause mental illness and even a psychotic break. This is a diagnosis, and and something bordering on a prescription, or at least by implication. So you you need to have like first first of all, let's assume that this statement is true. Let's assume for argument's sake that this is true. That makes this title in the context of this channel, which is not true, by the way, but this, this, it's incoherent, but this, this title in the context of a public channel being directed just to the world at large, profoundly irresponsible. You, you don't do that. Um, this is, this is the kind of thing where you, you start, okay, let's, let's get money for a study and let's actually like, let's define our terms. Let's figure if they're out, if there's something going on that, that requires some kind of intervention. Um, you don't do this. You don't just fire for out sure. for the consumption of anyone and everyone. Uh, hey guys, uh, this whole category of person, um, their existence, because he doesn't say he doesn't say the use of neo pronouns, doesn't say the use of of xenogenders in language. He just says xenogenders. That reads as as something very broad. Um, he just says that that could cause mental illness. Like that that is directly stigmatizing that group of people. Oh, With, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody, no, most people are not really equipped to um, properly deal with people who are um, mentally unwell, like even people who are legitimately mentally unwell. Like, it, it's kind of interesting, like how ubiquitous it is to just call people like schizophrenic, or you need help, you need to, you need to um, go see, you need to go get therapy. Yeah, right. Like it's people fundamentally don't know how to talk to people who are actually having mental problems and when you say something like xenogenders will lead to mental illness people will just use that as um justification to treat them with disdain as they would 
other people who are social, other like mentally ill people who are socially stigmatized, which I, I say other accepting the premise that xenogenders would cause mental illness. But like, I don't, I don't think that it does. But even if it did, like this would be such an, it would still be a really irresponsible video to make. The, the point is there's, there's no, there's no angle of approach that justifies this yeah. period. Yeah. All right. Well, so I, I'm not going to take up more of your time. I, I if you want to stick around, you're welcome. I, I really appreciate the clarifications. Um, uh, no, it's totally fine. I, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta hide from the guards. You know, the, fair enough. They, uh, the searched myself. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> take care. But I'll stick around and chat. All right. See ya. Sounds good. I like serious. All right. Let's go on. Which cannot be constrained to human understanding so to categorical thinking um but is still non of course can be constrained to categorical thinking but they're, they're they're categories nonetheless a category so to to kind of put that how this wouldn't necessarily affect someone's gender i am x but no one else can see that i'm x only i can see that i'm x i think would be a way of looking at it or i am x um uh, with I am X, and I think this is I think this is actually how it would play out in terms of it being a contradiction. I am X, but I'm also not X, but I am still X. Okay, because if you're a categorized gender identity, uh, but you're not a categorized gender identity, but you're a categorized gender identity, well, that's essentially a a, a living contradiction. That made no sense to me. I have no idea what the hell he was just saying. I actually I actually have no idea. What okay, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's. Okay. So a gender that can't be categorized by humans as being a gender, but it's still, they don't say this. It, it says a gender that cannot be, con it says xenogenders are genders that cannot be contained by human understandings of gender. I would, I would, I, I dislike this phrasing, but the implication is not a gender that can't be categorized by humans as being a gender, but, but are still genders. The implication is the gender is, in some sense, operating outside of conventional ways of describing gender. That would be better, I think. Something like conventional or, or a hitherto conventional, if you want to be really broad about it, um, or an expansion of the concept of gender, or a deliberate breaking away from the concept of gender as as um, as trying to fix things that should be uh, more fluidly understood. But it doesn't say, this is not an example of anything implied by the text here. I am X, but no one else can see I am X, only I can see I am X. This is not said anywhere. Nowhere is it said that no one else can see that they are, that, that they, they, they are of, that they avow a xenogender or, or use appropriate pronouns to, to that identity. Um, and in fact, one of the way, like the avowal is one of the ways in which you would make other people see. So they can, they might just require your assistance to do so. Um, this is just stupid. You're stupid, Lewis. <laughs> I'm sorry. So... Yeah, a non-category category. category. Uh, yes, exactly. No. Um, that doesn't make sense. You can't really I be agree. a non-category category. category. Um, yeah, yeah you, you can, as a matter of fact, be a non-category category. It's called category, non-category. Uh, like, think think of the, um, the, the Chinese encyclopedia in Foucault's The Order of Things, right? You have a bunch of things, and then you have stuff... Like miscellaneous stuff that is not categorized by the aforementioned. Boom! There you go. You've categorized the uncategorizable as the uncategorizable. Boom! You've done it. It's that easy. It, it'd be like saying that something is a a nothing but still a thing. Um, it it doesn't give any indications of what it is in a way that can actually bring around any kind of um. Xenogender is not not gender gender. Nobody said that any kind of knowledge i think that you could say that this is a form of 
I think the only way this could make sense existentially would be to relate it to the work of people like Kafka, something that's trying to deliberately resist meaning to try and indicate a deeper meaning that exists beyond the current categorizations. Um, now that I think is existentially interesting, do you know what I mean? But I also wouldn't want anyone to think that they should necessarily become a, a character in a Kafka, it, it, within Kafka's work. Like, that's not the life that anyone really, what? you don't want to worry whether you're a cockroach or not and, and whether like reality is fundamentally changing around you. That I don't, I don't know what just happened. Okay, so he he invokes Kafka as an interesting example of sort of breaking traditional categorizations. Kafka has a novel called The Metamorphosis, which somebody wakes up as being a cockroach, but still has all of their, like, human psychology and whatnot. Um, and therefore, he says that I don't, I don't think people should of vow xenogenders because I don't think people should live their life thinking they they're cockroach in Kafka's novel, but they they don't do that. They don't they don't have the bodies of cockroaches. They're they're vowing they're vowing identities at the level of personality and social role that clearly don't implicate like all of the bodily features of whatever animal name is being used to describe the xenogender. Like may maybe there there are some better ways to like linguistically clarify these terms, and maybe there are like confusing types of a vowel that that might benefit from some kind of, you know, specification or whatever. But I, what the hell is going on here? I, that's not a that's not a coherent move of reason, Lewis. I don't know what that was that's not good right that's just it's good for poetry it's good for creative works um it's good for self-expression as we'll get into later um you know but it's not good for um it's not good for an it's not a good identity it's they aren't literally turning into out animals lewis <laughs> Wait, what, what, are you, what are you talking about it's not a good it's not a good way to understand yourself in a permanent sense because it's going to lead to um well i'm going to argue mental illness how so okay he's going to argue it why do i think that it might be negative to have this kind of paradoxical identity right why is it that this identity may lead to a you know what kind of identity could lead to mental illness um, being a content creator and identifying with an academic institution and having a whole bunch of people who don't know any better going into your chat and affirming your expertise and your, your knowledgeability and whatnot, um, and that getting to your head, that, that'll, that'll screw you up. That, that'll cause, that'll make you deranged. Um, saying, saying you're, you're, you're socially a cat kind or whatever they, they use is, is not going to do that. I'm sorry. Um, mental health crisis. And the way I see it is that, well, the way that most people approach gender, well, I'm saying most people, well, actually, it doesn't even matter how you approach gender in this respect, but we'll, we'll, we'll go through it for the sake of it. Gender as a form of identity is a means of categorizing oneself in order to maximize, to understand oneself so that you can maximize uh, your freedom. So well, I got I got to release into that. I'm sorry. We'll go through it for the sake of it. Gender as a form of identity is a means of categorizing oneself in order to maximize, to understand oneself so that you can maximize uh, your freedom. So... Where the hell is he getting that from? It's when is gender to maximize your freedom? G gender, gender can specifically minimize your freedom. Like, if you're a woman in ancient Greece, you have substantially less freedom than uh, a, a, a man in ancient Greece, insofar as you're, you're socially identified as one. That doesn't follow at all. That doesn't follow one bit. Like the... the... <sighs> why, why do you think there was, there had to be specifically a movement for women's suffrage, Lewis? The, the gender was used specifically to deny them freedoms. It wasn't used to maximize freedom at all. 
that actually represented a barrier. If I'm a man and uh, I understand myself as a man, it allows me to gain self-knowledge, which allows me to then express myself in masculine ways so that I can um, essentially engage with reality. If you are a man, if the gender as such tracks something intrinsic about yourself, then I guess sure. But if it's a social category, then it can actually be obfuscating because now you're imputing to yourself characteristics that don't actually specifically belong to you. They're the result of the impingements of some cultural ambience that you're, you're kind of playing into. But that doesn't give you better self-understanding. It doesn't even necessarily say it, mean it's, it's wrong for you to do so, but self-understanding by what terms what the hell are you what the hell are you talking about you're not giving yourself self-understanding you're you're producing a persona that that's different like you're not you're not getting at something that was there all the time underneath you're just i don't know isn't his expertise in meta ethics his uh identified expertise in meta ethics President Sunday Lewis is very much on the side of rules and law are free, freeing. He said so many. I mean, there there's a case to be made within that, uh, within those specific terms, which are much narrower than what he's doing here. Right? You need like this is a basic thing going back to like Aristotle even. Um, to be free to acquire goods, personal or otherwise, that require society in order to exist, you need to have the parts of society that are required to to exist like that seems sort of t tautological um the question however is is therefore because we can identify certain goods um that require uh specifically because we can identify certain goods that require these institutions in order to be be attainable um does that thereby mean that uh those goods are are somehow uh intrinsic to us as like some kind of the ultimate manifestation of, of a linear developmental track that is sort of basically positive or intrinsically positive or is it just is it just the development of some logic that could have been otherwise like we could have we could have done other things and other people did do other things Like, uh, yeah, this is, he, Lewis basically read Hegel's philosophy of right, didn't understand what Hegel was responding to, didn't understand where he got his categories from. Didn't understand critiques of Hegel, um, and is just kind of rolling with it like it's 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 a Bible now for him. Um, he can't really think with Hegel so much as uh, use Hegel's terminology as as essentialized categories as a surrogate for actual thinking. That's that's my diagnosis. If I categorize myself, I gain knowledge of how I should interact with others and objects within the world as a way to maximize my, uh, my, my means-ends relationship. I'm trying to maximize my freedom or the expression of my uh, freedom. And to do that, I need a solid sense of self. I need a solid sense of um, reality around me. Now, if you have a paradoxical sense of self, if you have a paradoxical sense of or paradoxical categorization of self, something which is essentially incapable of actually obtaining truth, then you will have a fluctuation in how you understand yourself um, in relation to the reality as it exists without, around you. So this will lead... Exemplae gratia, perspective philosophy thinks is a philosopher. To a, miscate a miscategorization of objects of um, other individuals and I think that is usually what's happening probably prior 
to an individual even adopting this identity. But I think that it would... Ex oh, okay, so there we go. So he's actually stigmatizing um, people who avow xenogenders directly. Xenogenders don't cause mental illness. Xenogenders are, xenogenders are manifestations of mental illness, according to this guy. Certainly be exacerbated by this notion of identity, this notion that one one's gender can be um, essentially non-categorizable -categor but still known. Uh, it implies a level of um, almost mystical knowledge of the self, which I think, to be entirely honest with you, out of experience of dealing with people who've had psychotic breaks, is atypical of people who have had psychotic breaks. This idea that they know something that you don't, uh, that you simply do not understand, that they have this sort of inherent knowledge of the world because they are themselves that you cannot access and, you know, therefore you're absolutely wrong. And so this is... But that's that's true, though, in the case of any avowal of, of something that stems directly from personality, right? These are, these are privately held things. These are avowed things. Um, the logical consequence of this is actually a disavowal or not disavow, a, 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 um, this does not stop at xenogenders, is the point Lewis is missing here. Uh, Lewis is effectively making a turf position, um, because there are, there are people who avow, for example, female gender or male gender, who do not, by conventional standards, generally wherever they are, um, look that way, intuitively, to other people, except for their avowal that they are either non-binary or they are um, man or woman, or, or whatever. Like, like, obviously. Like, what's the, what's the logic here? What else are you going to refer to? If a, uh, if, if a trans woman um, doesn't want to be a, a stay-at-home spouse who, like, washes the dishes and cleans the house and whatnot, does that mean they're not a woman? And you can see how dark this gets very quickly, because if those are really the kinds of things that Lewis needs to be able to track in order to, um, in order to accept a, 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 an avowal of, of one's gender identity, then he regresses basically to basically essentialized uh, gender roles in terms of vocation, in terms of like the kinds of activities they can and can't do. So that's 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 a great look, Lewis. Congratulations, you're more regressive than Plato. It's, I think, dangerous if you genuinely believe it as a form of like existential you know um maybe existential play you know th there's nothing really wrong with that as long as it's you know controlled as long as you know that it's a fiction as long as you know that it's a pretense that it's not actually real and you're really just doing it as a way of calling into question maybe exis the existentialia you know these foundational concepts within you and think well wait a minute why do i associate with this and not this and, and so on like that so that's that's one way i think it could be approached in a way that would be more healthy uh rather than it being a gender identity okay so to summarize it's a paradoxical notion of self no it's not and a paradoxical notion of self leads to a paradoxical notion of objects and ide what? and uh, social relationships, so it's a paradox. I I don't I don't know how to parse that. Like give, give justify that statement. You can't just say that. Like, what is he talking about? Even even assuming his terms, which I don't accept for a second, um, because they're they're equally badly argued, if argued at all, you can't just say that. Um, I think that there is this um, 
people have came out and said, well, they don't actually believe. Uh, someone just dropped that in chat. They don't actually believe they are a deer, and that it's actually just a self association, right? And there's nothing wrong with make believe, right? If you want to pretend, um, you know, you're a deer, uh, and you know you're pretending you're a deer, uh, that's one thing. Uh, there is nothing if you are saying it's a gender. Um, I would not say that there is, I think there is a big difference between um, basic um, aesthetics. Like if I called myself like, I don't know, a steampunk or something, I'm not steampunk, but if I'd say I was a steampunk and I start, I, you know, I start dressing up in the steampunk attire, um, that's one thing, that's an aesthetic. I'm trying to display uh, an aspect of my, like I'm trying to creatively express my um my values, things that are like what I would say is as as worthwhile to the external world, and that gives people an indication of maybe my interests and you know my creative talents. There's nothing really wrong with that, right? I've nothing, I've nothing against that. If you want to be a cyberpunk, a steampunk, whatever you want to be, you know, you dress in a variety of different ways. That's absolutely fine, right? There's a difference when you say it's a gender, and it's di because genders specifically relate to the categorization of self. It's not about uh, it's about self-understanding rather than self categorization of, of self along what lines like we categorize ourselves along myriad lines that you have no problem with by by job by um by personality type by by a host of different things of expression Right. Self-expression can be pretty, pretty much anything you want. It doesn't have to fall into a category. It can be perfectly and absolutely uh, chaotic, right? If you want to, if if you, well, maybe not because you mightn't be understood, but you can do it. It's not going to necessarily um, cause any sort of like issue with your notion of identity. If people go like, I have no idea what you're trying to do there. Gen gender is a social category. Um, you, you avow it specifically because it affects how people treat you and, and, where they they slot you in or if they slot you in um it doesn't implicate your perception of objects like in in, in like a, a in like an epistemic sense that's this is nonsense like it can insofar as i guess like a, a gender description changes like what kinds of um what kinds of objects mean what but it's not like there's there's an error in your coding and you get an error symbol when you try to like perceive something on the television that's not how that works yeah and you go like that's fine i'm just a bit wacky you're like all right okay whatever like that's that like, you've got like rainbow colored hair and your makeup's all crazy and whatever like, that's fine um on the other hand if you're like no i'm a rainbow um that's not fine because then we're trying to live through that category. You see, that's the point about identities. They're not, they're not something that we uh, relate to. They are modes of expressing ourselves. Really? So, um, when you're, 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 you're specifically, uh, this is, this is a manly stream. He is, he is streaming manly or manly or whatever. Like, What what is it hindering hindering you from? Again, even accepting your terms, wh wh where is the logic here? Is he confusing xenogender with other kin? I don't even care if he's collapsing the two. It doesn't particularly matter because he's being incoherent. His em his epistemic views conclude that variance is an error that should be fixed if possible. Seems to be. He also, for some reason, thinks that gender is involved with maximizing freedom, which is the. I don't. I don't know how you how you get that. Traditional gender categories specifically limit freedom. That's kind of, in large measure, what they were for. They told you what you can and can't do. Specifically, they tell you what you can't do. Um, being a man in in a a traditional western style post greece state like it, it opens the door for example to being able to like develop political virtues such as they are 
Um, but it doesn't guarantee that you can get them. And it does guarantee that any activities that are associated with femininity or, or with being a woman um, are a source of shame. And for women, it prevents you from getting any of those other things while also having all of the rest. Because you're treated as like a, a an underdeveloped male, essentially. It, it's... This is, this is appallingly stupid. You know what's really frustrating, too, is he would know a lot of this stuff. Like, a lot of the problems with where he's going with this. If he actually read the fucking notes. So the copy of Hegel's philosophy of... Elements of philosophy of right that I know he uses. So... Which I know he doesn't, because he, he was quoting Hotho as if it was, um... As if it was uh, Hegel in his video on um, morality is objective, when these are just notes that were added in by students. <laughs> right, and I think that's really what I'm trying to um, kind of point out here. <gasps> PP is kind of a deer. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to watch a video of someone who claims to be um, gender fluid and uh non -bi gender fluid non-binary and uh, i'm not sure if she actually says demon gender in the video but the title of the video is to say that she identifies as a demon no is it a demon a gender fluid demon doll now 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 here's an interrogation that you could make um if somebody makes an avowal and packs in a bunch of content into like their avowal of they say like this is what my gender is and they pack in a bunch of stuff that you take issue with as being categorizable as specifically gendered or or, or as being an instance of, of or as being relevant to a gender distinction like you could have an interesting philosophical conversation then because it's like okay well what is gender and it's like gen gender is probably not represented by the kinds of nails you have or whatever it might be it's a social category it depends on where you are but you know like depending on where you are and depending like what what kinds of things we're accepting as sort of a default, as sort of like a background, you can have a conversation about what is appropriately, like, brought into that description as, like, a relevant uh, determining factor. Um, but the bare fact that it seems complicated or weird, I doesn't strike me as... It doesn't strike me as an argument uh, becoming of an avowed philosopher um, to say the thing is invalid. Like, yeah, demon gender sounds a little strange. Great. Well done. Good job, Lewis. Um, yeah, well, we'll just let her speak in our own words and we'll see what we can gain from this. Like, let's see if this gives us a notion of how we should kind of approach this. I'm Vlad, and I'm a gender fluid demon doll reclaiming the beauty and the monstrous. Oh, well, I think that's on double speed. Oh, no. Never go out without makeup on. I'm inspired by clowns, corpse paint, historical fashion. My mum's coming over to see me. We're quite different people. You have almost fought loads of people. <laughs> but still would. <laughs> my job is to protect you. Being able to treat my body as a canvas is like armor. I think that right there, um, I've watched about two minutes of this. Um, that there, being able to treat my body as a canvas is like armor. I think that that's essentially what this individual is doing. I think that um, this Lewis, why do you identify as a PhD candidate when you go on stream? What are you doing? Why do you grow a beard? Why do you shave your beard? Why is your beard not down to your chest or why is it non-existent? Why do you cut your hair? Why do you choose the outfit that you do? Why do you have books in your background? Why do you place your camera at that angle? Why did you call yourself perspective philosophy? You treat your body and your persona as much of a can as a canvas as every anybody else. That's that's what that's what personhood is. It's it's the thing you project to the world as your representation to them. This is less about gender expression. And I'm going to be honest. I have an easier time accepting this person as a demon doll than I have accepting you as a philosopher. Then. Um her relationship with others i think that when she's a demon it basically is a way of trying to um correct a power disbalance between herself and the perceived big other if you will the her notion of otherness and how other people will engage with her because of her negative experiences in life 
Um, unfortunately, in some respects, I that's literally what we all do, though. Like that, that's, that's, that's one of the ways in which we get conditioned to avow like specific gender identities. If someone feels nothing but euphoria when they're identified as a man, stands to reason, they're probably going to identify primarily as a man. Like that, I, I don't think she's arguing that she actually made a covenant with the devil and therefore is instantiating real demonic powers in a metaphysical sense. I don't think she believes that. She's deploying the language and the associations around that as a part of her persona. Which we all do. That's literally, that's, when you go to the dental office, as I unfortunately have to tomorrow, and you see their, um, their, their plaque on the wall saying that this is where they got their accreditation from, that's what they're doing. Demon Dolls versus Philosophers would be a great epic rap battle. Not if they're sending Lewis in. I, I would feel horribly... Not that I'm a philosopher, but I'd feel horribly... Uh, I feel that one side is being horribly represented there. I think that this has led to an identity crisis where she feels that she needs to behave a certain way and act a certain way as, as to correct the power disbalance which does not necessarily exist. And these are the kind of maybe... I don't want to say delusions, but the kind of... Um, dangerous um the dangers of this um notion of identity because once you realize that the individual is motivated towards an identity to try and express some sort of psychological well maybe some sort of pathology like maybe we all are like whether you are oh he's so close so close cis trans whatever um and so it relates to their notion of otherness and they're trying to express themselves <laughs> but that their self might be coming from a, their, their notion of the self is coming from their notion of other people. Then once they start living through this uh, pathology. Your notion of self always comes from your notion of other people though. Like it's not, it's not intrinsically rooted in other people's opinions about you, but the reason why you, you care about your persona is because your, your exteriority bears on how you relate to other people. It bears on how people see you. I don't think people would generally like assuming all the stuff was available, they would not generally um, wear tremendous amounts of, of makeup or whatever, or dress up in specific ways, or choose certain outfits, or wear anything categorically, um, if there was no history of that bearing on the relationship of the world in some way with respect to other like seeing beings um, for whom those depictions have some kind of legibility where they tell you something, like obviously. The demon person's justification is no different than a bro going to the gym to get buff so he can fit into the traditional idea of masculinity. Yeah, basically. That sets off a lot of internalized hate red flags. Is his fear of relating to community and connecting to... I don't know. He He's... Lewis actually does veer. Like, I, I watched his... um. I watched his debate with Chad Not Chud a little while ago on the death penalty. Um, and he actually took the stance that he, he just really, really wants murderers to die. That, that was, that was basically the essence of his argument. Um, it is, it is against justice for them to live or whatever. And like, he, he reaches some, some fairly, someone in the chat mentioned he, he goes into some fairly fashy territory. I think that's, I even made the remark during that debate, like, He's basically, basically for all intents and purposes, a fascist. I don't know why on earth he's bothering to try and sell himself as a socialist. Um, because he's not. He's he's not a lefty. I think he he saw that there was. In fact, I have a strong suspicion here. Why is he on this all of a sudden? Um, destiny started shifting towards uh interacting primarily with, or, or at least not, not primarily, but most saliently with uh, right wing figures. Is going on to cozy um he looks very much look i watched um i watched the debate between or, or the argument between mr Medicare, who's come out of retirement apparently and um nick fuentes a couple days ago um mr Medicare, for all of his flaws there are a great many of them he did a better job of dismantling nick fuentes than destiny ever could because destiny validates the person as a reasonable kind of actor who should be engaged with seriously whereas Medicare dismantled um 
himself at the level of his dignity, which was a, a much more profoundly damaging move. Uh, Mr. Medeker did more damage to Nick Fuente's platform in a night than I think Destiny has in his entire career. In fact, I think Destiny, by contrast, has actually helped him. Um, in ways, by the way, I don't endorse. But, like, that's the level we're operating at here. And I think what's happened is perspective philosophy has perceived this as uh, Booksmarts perceived when uh, Destiny started interacting with Mr. Girl, with Lauren Southern, suddenly it's like, ooh, this is where the money is. This is where the growth is. Lewis has perceived that Destiny has beef with Doe. Excuse me, sorry. Has beef with uh, Doe, um, who avows uh, neo-pronouns, like, like it, it's. Um, and is is jumping on this because this is this is where the money is. I I think that's what's going on here. I think this is cynical. He has no interest in this topic. He's done zero research. His basis for this is, look at the funny demon person on YouTube. That's not research, of which I've watched two minutes. I presume Mr. Medeker is too far gone in regards to the fright. Mr. Medeker is a, is a strange creature. Um, I actually, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to say I like him per se, but I have, I have a certain begrudging respect for him, um, in that I think he's he's real and earnest. I disagree with him categorically. I think he does a lot of really unethical stuff. I also think he does stuff because he believes in it generally. Um, but he's he's. I think he's a toxic actor as well. The point, though, is that specifically in how he relates, and how somebody who is like well within the range of what we would generally characterize as being far right, um, he did more damage to Nick Fuentes than the biggest streamers avowedly on the left do. That's not an endorsement of, of Mr. Medeker. That's a deep condemnation of of the the political left right now on on on, uh, on the the political left, the the online left. Oh yeah, Nick was getting torn apart, and crucially, Nick was getting torn apart in such a way as made him undignified and weak before a specifically right-wing audience. Now that meant, of course, things like homophobic attacks, stuff like that. So I don't endorse it, but it, it's important because it's like, okay, he's getting dismantled from the inside, but he has a lifeline. He has been identified by some of the major streamers on the political left, Specifically with Destiny, who, with the exception of Hassan, I think is basically one of the largest ones of that type. Who, like, engages in debates with people and things like that. Who has, like, some level of accessibility by his audience. Or, or, or rather, um, who, who his audience has some level of access to. Um, Nick Fuentes becomes an object of interest almost precisely because Destiny interacts with him specifically. Destiny doesn't interact with Sargon. What do you notice? Almost nobody... Uh, interacts with, with Sargon outside of people who are already long uh, in his camp. Um, but people are champing at the bit to engage with Fuentes. Part of it's also because Sargon's milk toast and stupid as opposed to just being stupid. But Medicare brought up the Catboy stuff. Oh, he brought up every kind of thing. It's not something I'll cover on here. Um... Medeker is not your friend, by the way, if you're trans, so I don't endorse, uh, I don't, I don't endorse him at all. Um, he's interesting because he is, he is a very, very bad actor in a lot of ways, but is also very real. Um, so it's like, like he, he was on top of, um, of COVID, uh, but, but in a grossly, uh, xenophobic and, and racist way. An exaggerative way, even, indeed. Um, way back before anybody else was, as far as I could tell. Which made him particularly interesting. If still blameworthy for a whole host of other things. I I'm getting off topic, but you get the point. Oh yeah, no, no Medi Medicare is, is, a, is a nasty piece of work regardless. Um, but... Point of that digression to bring it all back in. This strikes me as a deeply cynical move because he's no longer doing his PhD and he's trying to drum up controversy to grow his channel. And he's specifically picking controversy 
that is orbiting around Destiny's uh, indiscretions on Twitter recently. That's that's my that's my take on this at this point. It could lead to them continuously recategorizing and categorizing individuals through the through that pathology, and I think that that is kind of what I, I think is the risk from this. Is that all you got? Just gonna do a cute little nosebleed. I just think they make every look like ten times cuter. I really like real blood, so. I used to sometimes paint with my blood. I identify as non-binary. I'm gender fluid. I like float between demi-boy and agender. There's a thing called xenogender where people can explain their gender in more vague terms. So sometimes I'm like, my gender today is pink PVC. <laughs> Growing up black, queer, and trans, you learn from an early age that the world often perceives you as a threat. Being told you're inherently monstrous your whole life, eventually I embraced my monstrousness, became the demon I was always meant to be. So, I mean, it sounds like, um, well, I'll, let, I'll let her continue, actually. School was hell. I got picked on a lot for being weird. I didn't have many friends towards the end of school. I hated everyone. Yeah, so I'm thinking... Wait, why is he not doing his PhD? I heard from people that he stopped his PhD. Apparently his supervisor quit or something. I think, and to be entirely honest with you, that this is a reaction to our bullying. Um, like, which I understand because I was, I was really badly bullied. Should maybe autistic. Um, you know, the idea of xenogender, I think, lends itself what? to autistics. In the sense that you know we do have what some people describe as other planet syndrome um where we feel alienated from um from others and it can be difficult i think to um to deal with you know if you feel that you're a permanent outsider you know there's an aspect of sociality which you simply do not understand and then you are pushed out and excluded because of that or maybe you simply just approach sociality in a different way because of the way in which you process the world like that perspective philosophy why are you avowing that you're autistic in the context of this conversation is it not precisely to do exactly what demon person here is doing it's not a criticism this isn't isn't that a fact like when you when you avow something you're effectively putting a veneer of a layer of makeup over yourself you were telling people hey read me through this filter you you put on specific kinds of clothing read me through this filter you avow a phd read me through this filter yes he did just use autistic that way referring to autistics and i think he's he's i think he's avowing that he himself is autistic so i'm not going to challenge that at all um that being said like again the fact of locuting that that's that's you're you're appending things to your persona. That's not inherently a bad thing, but I'm not the one arguing that it is. That's what Lewis is doing. Hot take, but even if autism caused xenogenderism, I don't think that would make it invalid. The fact that autistic people relate to gender distant, differently can make sense. Why are they wrong? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 silly. I think that can genuinely lead to some uh, existential issues within an individual. And I think in this case, it led her to being bullied and that bullying, I think she tried to remedy by creating, by turning herself into a monster, as she says, you know. Um, yeah, like very much like a coping mechanism, uh, AGL, exactly. Um, it seems like uh, I would expect this, to be honest, to be the number, like the kind of causes that you'd find that people fall into these identity issues where they feel like they can't, categorize themselves by normal human categories because they are trying to fulfill um a dis you challenge it it's ableist as fuck i i don't i don't challenge his avowal um here's a here's a hot take um and this is dangerous which is why i'm not doing it because you can't do it because the fact is we don't know um but just as any kind of avowal of that kind appends to your persona that's now what you're, you're doing that for a reason. He is doing it in this context so that he can make this criticism of her and do so without being imputed with bigotry against that category of people. 
Now, I disagree that that actually effectively does that. I think there's no contradiction between being bigoted against a category that you ascribe to yourself. But that's 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 why that's that's the purpose of, of avowing that in the first place, is saying like, no, I understand this is where I come from, and maybe that's true. I have no idea, but I really dislike when people make avowals in that context, specifically for the sake of gaining social capital to make an attack on somebody else. That creeps me out. Um, that to me is, is an abuse of other people's goodwill. Um, it's also, uh, it's also abusing, um, your standpoint because again, like, like she, she's not in this conversation, right? Um, he, he's, he's using this to be able to diagnose her, the development of her personality and her reasons. Like it's, it's gross. Like, I, I, I have no idea. Like, like it's just it's just a brute fact. Like you can you can adopt characteristics cynically. Laura Southern, um, in one conversation, um, avowed uh, that she was a man in conversation, and her interlocutor, being a minimally decent person, was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I misgendered you." But she did that cynically, even though she doesn't believe that, even though she's deeply transphobic and and doesn't 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 believe um, in anything other than vagina equals woman, essentially. Um. She, she did so to, to win a, a petty debate and to uh, make somebody appear uh, sort of weak on camera. People can do that. People can do that about all sorts of things. That person did the right thing and they assumed that they were correct. Why? Because, well, what are you going to do? Like, this is the kind of thing that uh, you can only know ultimately by someone else's avowal and or a doctor's diagnosis and or both because neither of these things are, are really perfect in the end. But wait a minute. That brings up a strange thought. I, I, I actually have have no way of knowing whether or not Lewis is autistic, except for his avowal. I am X, but no one else can see I am X. Only I can see I am X. This is what he is arguing is a contradiction. You're a little bit dumb, Lewis. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Um. <laughs> God, what a boob. Um, do we need to see more? Do we, do we get the idea? I think we've given him enough to chew on for when I upload this as a segment. I think we're good. By the way, uh, Sirius, let me know if um, you're comfortable with me uploading this as a segment, because... I know you were in his community. I just want to make sure I'm not putting uh, the fire on you. I can cut that sequence with you out if you like. But God. <sighs> okay, good. You're, you're cool for that? Okay, brilliant. All right, I'm going to go uh, refill my coffee, which I guess is coffee three for the day, so that's dangerous. And um, we'll make a decision what we're going to do next, whether it's going to be Harry Potter or Rose Wrist. This is not the review, the response to Rose Wrist. That's going to be tomorrow. After a dental appointment, God help me. Um, we're just looking at some other conversation. I don't know if we're going to do that today. I think I might say that for tomorrow. We might just jump into the uh, Sean Harry Potter video. Because I want to do something kind of fun now, now that we've gone through this dreck. And, uh, yeah. I guess, uh, final note on this. Lewis... You're a terrible philosopher, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you need to be a terrible human being. In addition, um, exercise the level of responsibility that we would expect from any uh, person operating a cash register, uh, if you would, since you're using your institutional standing um, as as a, as a credential. Thank you.